Greetings again today in that name that's far above every name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate your presence. We'd like to have our visitors. Hoping God will bless us and warm our hearts today. And we appreciate your presence. Now you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up we can be an inspiration to everyone. You in the radio listening audience, if you call a friend, have them to tune in and get this hour, I believe we can be a blessing to them. I'm going to speak to you today on this subject, Hurricanes and the Spirit of God. You know, recently we've had several hurricanes, more than usual. And why are they coming? Why so many? I want to speak to you on that subject, hurricanes and the Spirit of God. It'll be tape number 205. If you'd like to have the cassette tape with the singing, the music, and the message, it'll be tape 205. You can write in and request it. Send a gift of $3 to help defray our radio expense, and we'll get the tape right in the mail to you. Now, we have a list of some 200 tapes here. I have more than 200. I, I guess maybe I have close to 300, but we have 200 listed here on this sheet I have in my hand. And if you'd like to have a list of our, two, our tapes, write in a question, say, Preach Edward, send me a list. We'll send you a list of 200. You can select the ones you'd like to have. They're very good for shut-ins and uh, maybe people that can't get out to church and it'd be a blessing to you. So write in for the list. Write in for our tape. Pray for us. We do covet your prayers as we try to move on getting the gospel out during these days. Now maybe some of you are wondering what to get your parents or some shut-in for Christmas. Have you ever thought about getting them a cassette tape player so they could listen to these tapes and others? Uh, maybe oh, you want to get somebody a Christmas present you hadn't thought much about it. Well, think about that. I do have a few Schofield reference Bibles on hand. If you're considering a Bible for someone around Christmas time, and I'd be glad to talk with you about them. I'm not in the Bible setting business, but I've ordered a few, and I can let you have them at a discount. And... And I'll help you out in that respect. Now I'm speaking today from Matthew chapter 24. And then speaking from the book of Luke uh, chapter 21. If you care to turn there, speaking on hurricanes and the Spirit of God. I hope you're turning your Bible to these places. It's page 1033 and 1106. Somebody's telling me the other day about this man driving down the highway at breakneck speed and then a trooper pulled up behind him, and, and when he saw the state trooper, he really took off, and the trooper right behind him, and he kept on. He was making more than 100 miles an hour. And finally, the trooper got him stopped, pulled him over, and said to him, said, Man, what in the world are you doing? Why are you driving so fast like that? The man said, Well, the reason for it is this, said, My wife run off with a state trooper here the other day and left me. I thought you was just bringing her back, so I was moving on. Now, Matthew chapter 24, I want to begin reading with verse uh, uh, 5. And many shall come in my name, said I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See, shall be not trouble, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nations, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. That word divers mean different places. All these the beginning of sorrows. Now that word pestilence has to do with this terrible disease called AIDS. Now if you look up the word pestilence in the dictionary, it can be applied to uh, AIDS or any other disease that might be destroying mankind. And so this terrible disease called AIDS today is a fulfillment of the Bible. Yeah. God said there'd be pestilence in the last days. And they may never find a cure for it. It may wipe out millions on the face of the earth. We don't know. 
Never been, never been found a cure for cancer. And they may never find a cure for AIDS. And most Bible-believing Bible, Bible -believing preachers believe it's the curse of God upon the uh, homosexual community and all those that are involved. And it may spread all over the nation, may spread all over the world. Now we need to realize it's a pestilence that's come upon the earth exactly like God said would come. Now in Luke chapter 21, page 1106, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves rowing, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things began to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. That is the rapture or the redemption of the body. The soul's been redeemed. The body is yet to be redeemed. That is glorified. Now they've had four great hurricanes down here in the Gulf and around Florida and in that area in the past few months. I think it's been a long time since they've ever had a hurricane this late in the month of November, like this last one they've had down there. Now these things are coming more numerous. Now the volcano that killed maybe some 25,000 people not too long ago, earthquake that took the lives of so many down in that area. Now dear people, you listen to me. These things are fast coming upon the earth. They're going to be more numerous. As we move closer to the end, Amen. there'll be more earthquakes, more eruptions of volcanoes, yeah. there'll be more hurricanes, the seas to be volcanoes, the hurricanes, the storms, the unusual weather, and the pestilence and all these things happening. Jesus said, you better start looking up because your redemption draws nigh. And there's perplexity of nations. When nations can't get together, they can't uh, seem to agree. And many things happening. Just uh, yesterday, I believe, another hijacking of a plane out of Athens, Greece. And uh, some of them being killed on that plane. And those things are happening. The world is greatly disturbed. There is becoming a change in the weather. Now, when I was a little boy, we'd go see our grandparents on Thanksgiving. And sometimes there'd be snow on the ground. And there'd be snow around Thanksgiving. But now you very seldom ever see any snow in this area before around uh, January or February. And then you don't have much cold weather until up around uh, uh, Christmas time or thereafter before you have much cold weather. Now the seasons are gradually shifting to a certain extent. And then the cooler weather lasts as long in the spring on up into May and maybe sometimes June. Now those things we're facing when I was a boy, it was altogether different. The cold weather started coming in in September and October, right on up until maybe March, and then uh, people would plant their corn in March. And the weather would begin to get pretty in the spring of the year, to be honest, and things would look different, but there's a change. Now there'd be a lot of changing as we move toward the end. These things we need to realize and expect to come, they will come. But I want to speak about the hurricanes and the Spirit of God. Now the howl of a hurricane is one of the most dreaded sounds on the high seas. Now we have a young sailor visiting with us yet today. And he's no doubt been on the high seas. And he could probably tell you that the howl of a hurricane is one of the most dreaded sounds on the high seas. Now they come and there's nothing we can do about it. There's been a lot of storms here recently. Uh, much unusual weather, much talk about the weather. I was yonder in uh, Bristol, Tennessee last week in a meeting, and they were talking there about the weather, the most unusual weather, the warm weather there in Bristol, Tennessee. At this time of the year, usually they'd have real cold weather, but it was real warm up there, and they kidded me a lot about bringing that Georgia weather up there, but it was real warm and probably warm there today. And these things are happening. It's unusually warm for this time of the year. In another week, we're going to be entering into the month of December. And things are kind of changing and people are disturbed about it. Now these hurricanes, there may be another hurricane to come 
before cold weather. Who knows? But I want us to notice from the word of God that the wind is of divine origin. It takes the wind in those hurricanes to make them powerful and effective. And the wind is of divine origin. The Bible says in Psalms 135 and verse 7, He bringeth the wind out of his treasures. God does that. Now God sends the wind, but many times God would allow for his own sovereign purpose, the devil, to shake up the weather. That happened in the Bible many times in the days of Job. The devil sent a, a storm and destroyed some of Job's children and, and sent lightnings and destroyed some and so forth. We find when Jesus rode upon the Sea of Galilee while he was asleep, the devil sent a storm and, and was going to drown the, the apostles. And, and of course, he couldn't drown the Son of God. He did not drown the apostles, but he tried. And Jesus stood up and rebuked that storm, and it ceased. Now, God gives the winds. They come from the four compass corners, and then you have the whirlwind. God sends the winds, but the devil gets into them. Now, the devil is a principality of power there, and he can get into the wind and cause these storms, but he can only do that as God permits him to do that. The devil can't bet his eye unless God permits it, and you need to realize that God is sovereign. And so God sometimes allows the devil to do certain things for a certain reason. Now, he allowed the devil to destroy Job's family. When the storms came, he did that for a reason. He allowed the Sea of Galilee, the storm, to come there. He did that for a reason, to show the disciples and apostles the power of God Almighty in calming that storm and to shake them up and so forth. And so the same God is out to the finish of our faith and the same from the same God comes the Spirit of God. Now the Spirit of God comes upon us. It comes from God. It originates with God. He is very God. And the Spirit of God is strong and powerful. And without the Spirit of God, we couldn't get very far in serving the Lord. But He comes on the scene in great power. Remember, He came on the day of Pentecost as a mighty rushing wind. Amen. And so like a hurricane, the Spirit comes sometimes. He did on that day. And He came in great power, great moving power. Another time, they were praying in Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. And the buildings began to shake. Through the power of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God came on the scene. And so wind is divine origin, and so is the Spirit of God. Secondly, the wind cannot be seen. Now you can see debris, of course, in the air. You can see particles of dust and, and things like that in the air. But you absolutely cannot see the wind. Now you can see the water caught up in the hurricane, but you cannot see the wind. That wind is in there, but it cannot be seen. No one has ever seen the wind. You can feel the wind, and you can see the leaves trembling. You can see dust in the air. You can see debris floating around in the air, but you cannot see the wind. Seven years ago, when a tornado came through this area, we saw all kind of uh, containers and debris and piece of uh, tin and wood and whatnot coming through this area. Some came through the window down at the Parsonage, and it went across the road. If you've been driving along there, you could hardly survive because of the strong wind driving those forces, driving debris and whatnot in the air. But you can't see that wind. It's there. It's powerful. It cannot be seen. In John chapter 3 and verse 8, The wind bloweth what list is, thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now you cannot see the wind, neither can you see the Holy Spirit. Now, he came on the day of Pentecost, but nobody saw the Spirit of God. They saw tongues of fire, but they didn't see the Spirit of God. Nobody sees the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is here this morning, but you can't see Him. The Spirit of God is the one that gave birth to your soul, but you couldn't see Him doing it. He operated in your heart and mind, but nobody saw the Spirit of God. You've never seen the Spirit of God. Now, the Spirit of God, of course, cannot be seen Neither can the wind. Now the wind comes in great power, but you do not see the wind. The Spirit of God comes in great power, but you do not see the Spirit of God. We come to thought number three, and that is the wind is mysterious. Now that wind that comes and catches up that water in a hurricane is very mysterious. They see the water and, 
and they know the danger is there and they can feel the pressure but they can look in vain they can never see that wind it's in there with great power it's catching up that water it's doing great damage it's moving in great force but nobody can see it now you notice how quickly it it can be changed, how swiftly it may cease, and how quickly it may change sometimes. The wind I'm talking about. And so the wind may be blowing in one direction one moment, and the next moment it may come in from another direction. That's the sovereign and divine power of God. Nobody can see that. And so is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, of course, is something very mysterious apart from the Scriptures, but we know He operates, and you never know when he's going to move in great power. Last week up in Tennessee, we were having breakfast one morning there with a pastor and a, a couple other fellows, another minister, and they were talking about a meeting they had up there in Johnson City here this past summer. How once again they felt the Spirit of God. They felt his presence. He was there. And this minister had been ministering there for many years. He said that's the first time that he had felt the Spirit of God with such great power and force in many, many years. He said we had a little touch of a revival. But you never know which way the Spirit is coming and when He's coming. Dwight L. Moody was walking down the street in New York City. He'd often prayed that God would fill him with the Holy Spirit. He said, God, I must have the filling of Thy Spirit. I cannot operate without the filling of Your Spirit. And walking down the street, there he was filled with the Spirit of God. God began to bless him. He began to lift his hands and praise God. And he couldn't contain himself. He walked into an empty building. He shouted. He praised God. He cried under the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. His life was completely changed as far as the effective power of his witnessing was concerned. All because of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now he didn't realize the Spirit of God was sovereign and would come at his own chosen time. He thought maybe if he's ever filled with the Holy Spirit, he'd be in a meeting. Or he'd be down on his knees praying. Or he'd be with a group of people asking for the fullness of the Spirit. But he was just walking down the street. He had gone to New York City to raise funds to help take care of the people that were burned out in the great Chicago fire. And so the Spirit of God overwhelmed him. Charles G. Finney, that man was so full of the power of the Holy Ghost in his day until he could walk through a plant where they were sewing and carrying on making cloth and the whole group would fall under conviction. He did that on one occasion. The superintendent stopped the plant and said, stop the wheel, stop the plant. Let's get over here and have a service. We can't operate under a situation like this. And they went into the building over there and had a service and hundreds got saved. Charles E. Finney was just walking through the plant when the power of the Holy Ghost came in great power. He didn't know he was coming in great power at that time. He was mightily filled with the Spirit of God. It's a mysterious operation. That hurricane, when it comes, it's a mysterious operation. And people dread it and they know there's, there's great danger coming. And they hardly know what to do. And so you can hardly tell when the Spirit of God may come. You may get your prayer answered while you're washing dishes, or while you're sweeping the floor, or while you're driving your automobile along the highway, while you're on your job, while you're in church. You never know when the Spirit of God may decide to really fill you and thrill you and bless you in an unusual way. Number four, the wind is not without a purpose. Now God Almighty allows these hurricanes to come, but not without a purpose. I know the devil gets into them, but God permits that many times. And that's not without a purpose. God may be speaking to this nation. God did say these things would come in the end time. And they're not coming without a purpose. God's divine purpose. In the book of Jonah chapter 1 and verse 4, we find that God sent a great storm upon the sea. There in uh, uh, chapter 1 and began to rock the boat and they were about to drown and the reason for that storm is because there was a backslidden Baptist preacher on board. And they had to get rid of him before it would stop. And so they threw Jonah overboard and then the storm ceased and the mariners arrived safely at their destination. Now God permitted that storm to come for that reason. Now God knows what he's doing. If a storm comes, God knows why it's coming. 
Now we find also in the book of Jonah, the last chapter, that Jonah sat there under a vine and the wind blew against him. Strong wind blew against him. So strong under the blazing sun until he could hardly stand it. Now God was doing that to chase him, that preacher to get him in the right uh, position and attitude toward the Ninevites. And God permitted that storm to come. And so when the storms come, we know God must allow them to come or they wouldn't come. But don't misunderstand me, the devil will jump into them. And many times God just let him go ahead and take it over and do the damage. And God allows that for a purpose. We are not to question God and what he does and why he does it. God is sovereign. God can do what he wants to do. And there's nothing we can do about it. And so all of these changes in the weather and the storms, the tornadoes, the hurricanes and all of the floods and the droughts and all of these things, God knows about. He's allowing these things to happen because he said in the end time they would happen. And people would be disturbed and shaken up. This old pestilence known as AIDS, God allowed that thing to come because of his disapproval of what was happening in the homosexual community. And God allowed that thing to come. God dealt with Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sins. And God is dealing with that uh, movement, no doubt about that. And this plague may stay here till Jesus comes. Some great uh, doctors don't think there'll ever be a cure for it. They are fighting to try to do something about it. Somebody might have said it might end up like the Black Plague in Europe many years ago that killed out hundreds of thousands of people and almost wiped out the human race in some places. That could happen. It's possible. That thing could spread so without being stopped until it could wipe out half or more than half of this nation and half of the world if God wants it done that way. And there's nothing man can do about it. It's a plague that's sent upon this nation. Now these plagues were sent up on Egypt back in the days when Moses led God's people out. They broke out in boils and all kind of plagues came upon them. Pestilences came like in that uh, form and they came because God was dealing with Pharaoh to get his people out of the Egyptian bondage and God allowed them to come. Let's move on for, uh, to another step number five. Hurricane winds have a season. As a general rule, a hurricane usually comes uh, late in June until sometimes in November, the early part of November. We are having the late one last week on the latter part of November. That's very unusual. But they usually have a season and operate in that manner. And that's known as a hurricane season. You people know about that. And so sometimes the Holy Spirit comes uh, in a seasonal times. There were hundreds waiting in Acts chapter 2. And there the storm came. The Holy Spirit came upon those people on scheduled time. Now what you need to realize is this. You have a lot of these charismatics today. They think that people have to get out on the floor and beat the floor and some yell hold on and some yell turn it loose and, and some tell them uh, to say this word and continue to repeat the word until you get your tongue all tangled up and don't know what you're saying and they say, well, that's it. Well, that's not it. Beloved, that's not it. Now, God didn't tell people on the day of Pentecost to go there and get out and beat and bang the floor and scream and holler and yell and jabber and uh, say certain phrases and words, words until they got their tongues tangled. He didn't tell them to do that. They were there sitting. And that word sitting is a word that's very calm in the original. That was a very calm moment of time they were sitting there. God said you just go there and wait. You go there and tarry until he comes. And they went there. Their praying had nothing to do with his coming. Beloved, the reading the Bible had nothing to do with his coming. While they could have been playing checkers, it made no difference. The Holy Spirit was coming at that particular time. I didn't say they were playing checkers. I said if they, if they had been, that would not have stopped him. He came on scheduled time. God says, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit on a certain day. And he sent him on that certain day. That was planned with God before the foundation of the world. And it had its season. And the church never got over that storm. When that storm of the Spirit of God came on the day of Pentecost and shook that crowd up and they went everywhere witnessing, telling the story of Jesus and went in thousands to God. Why? Because the storm of the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost like a mighty rushing wind, the Bible tells us. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and God baptized into one body 
all believers and join them together in one body on the day of Pentecost. That was a result of the baptism of the Spirit that came, baptizing them all together into one body. Now, since that time, every believer that's ever been saved receives that baptism the moment he's born again. He's baptized into the body. Now, that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. They were baptized into one body. And now when a person is saved, he's baptized into one body. That is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's the only definitive verse of Scripture in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 that you find pertaining to the church today in regard to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's none other. And that takes place the moment that you're born again. If someone come to you and ask you, have you received the baptism? You say, well, certainly I am. I'm saved. They say, well, no, wait a minute. I know you're saved, but have you received the baptism? You said, yes. That's where I got in the body of Christ. That's the only way anybody can get in is by the baptism. But there's no other baptism apart from that. There's a filling of the Spirit of God. You can be filled many times. One baptism, many fillings. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost comes the moment you're born again. You're baptized into the body of Christ. And so he came on that day, baptized into the body, all believers. And from that time until now, every believer has been baptized the moment he was born again. If you teach anything different, you're teaching error. And you need to realize that you have not a leg to stand on and no scripture to back you up if you teach otherwise. Now, we come to number six. That is a hurricane cannot be stopped. Now, some have tried but failed. You can't stop a hurricane. When that thing comes, it's coming. And it can't be stopped. People are helpless. All you do is take cover. Get out of the way. That thing is coming because a hurricane. And it's of God. And maybe the devil may have gotten the thing. And you can't stop it. No way you can stop it. It's got to run itself out. And so it is with the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God comes, the devil can't do anything about it. On the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came, that's not a thing the devil's crowd could do. They stood out there and criticized. They said, these men are drunk on wine. Uh, they're drinking. They're gone half crazy. They couldn't do a thing about that. Because the Spirit of God came and that bunch of Pharisees uh, could not stop the Spirit of God from working. He came and worked in a marvelous way. Number seven, the weather experts fear that bombardment of a hurricane might make it stronger. So they say we might as well let it go. If we bombard that hurricane, it might make the thing stronger than what it is. So just let it run itself out and get out of the way. That's the only thing they can do. And so it is with God's church and God's people. I don't care how hard the devil's crowd may try to hinder God's people or destroy God's people or persecute God's people. The more they're persecuted, the more they have to suffer, the more powerful, powerful they are and more they'll multiply. That's the way God got them out of Jerusalem. They were having a good time there in Jerusalem, praising God, going from house to house, winning souls to Jesus Christ. And then God said, I've got to get them out from there and get them scattered out across the country. And God allowed them to be persecuted. Some they put in jail, some they whipped and beat, some of the preachers they killed. And they had to leave Jerusalem and they got out there and went in every direction telling the story of Jesus. And so we must remember that you can't stop a, a hurricane, neither can you stop the church of God. Somebody said, well, I believe the church is going down. Not God's church. You may have a lot of religions and, and a lot of church members that become uh, disobedient and, and drop out. But God's true people are going to continue on. Jesus said, I build my church upon this rock and the gates of hell will not prevail, prevail against it. The church will be here when the rapture comes and God will take us out. Then our next thought is this. Sometimes everyone in the path of a hurricane is overcome and swamped. We know that. Many times people are caught in that thing. They're overcome. They're swamped in it. And uh, sometimes they're hurt. Sometimes they're killed. Sometimes people become rebellious and won't get out of the way of one. Down here many years ago, there's a hurricane coming toward uh, Louisiana and, uh, I mean, the New Orleans, maybe someplace in the, on the coast there anyway. And they decided, a bunch of drunks decided they'd get them some liquor and beer and just have a party and, and have a hurricane party. And so they all began to drink and going to sit around and, and enjoy it. I think what happened was he got drowned, best I can remember the story. 
Beloved, you can't play with something like that. And so the Spirit of God moves upon God's people and sometimes controls God's people. And it's hard to understand why He would control them in that manner. And so the Spirit of God moves mightily. In the meeting we was in last week up in Tennessee, they had an all-night prayer meeting on Saturday night. They had one man there, uh, the pastor mentioned, that prayed all night long. Some of them prayed most of the night. And they could feel, they said, the power of God is, as that man prayed, after, he spent the whole night in prayer talking to God. And so people can understand that. You can't stop God's people when they set out to do the work of God. Then again, hurricanes usually blow themselves out in a frigid zone. As that hurricane begins to move and hit a frigid zone, it, it begins to fade out. And so does the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God comes on the scene, and when God's people are obedient, He continues to work. When they become uh, cold, indifferent, unconcerned, in a frigid zone, He begins to leave out. Now, I'm going to tell you something today. The Holy Spirit of God has already left most of the organized churches in America today. You won't find the Holy Spirit in many churches anymore. He's already gone. He hit a frigid zone. He's already gone. They tell me in the First Baptist Church in New York City. Now, this is New York City. This is not a village. This is New York City. And the First Baptist Church in New York City, they have an average attendance of 25 in the morning service. Can you imagine that in, the, in New York, in the First Baptist Church, average attendance of 25? I don't think they even have a Sunday night service. Beloved, that's a frigid zone. The Holy Ghost has left them, and they just meet there, about 25 of them, in a dead service. And then about, I guess, 12 o'clock, the dead rise and go home. Now, we need to realize that the Holy Spirit of God soon leaves a place where he's not wanted, and he fades away and moves on out. And then finally, the wind is free. Now, the wind doesn't cost you anything. While well, you can help yourself to the wind, it doesn't cost you anything. Now, you don't have to pay a monthly bill for the wind. You, now, if you could, while well, you'd be getting the bill each month, and this is your wind bill. For enjoying the wind that blows, we're going to send you a bill each month. And we got a lot of fellows that would be glad to do that, send you a bill. But uh, they can't do that. Now, the wind is free. It doesn't cost you anything. So is the Spirit of God. He's free. He doesn't charge you anything. The salvation of God is free, but God expects you to be obedient and serve Him faithfully when you are saved and God wants to use you and He will use you if you're willing to be used. Now, if you're here this morning and you're not a born-again believer, you need to get saved. I've seen people leave my services that died and went to hell for never heard another message. I'm not trying to intimidate anybody. I'm giving you cold facts. I preach to people in my service that died before they got home. I'm still not trying to intimidate you. I'm giving you cold facts. If you are not saved and you die in that condition, you're going to hell as certain as I'm speaking to you. And if somebody needs to get saved this morning, you ought to come forward and get saved. If you need to come back to God, you need to come forward. If you want to join this church where we receive members, you need to come. So I trust you will. This message is on tape 205. In case you're interested, let's all stand to our feet for a word of prayer. Father, I pray today that you use the message on the hurricane and the Spirit of God. Use it to bless thy people and help thy people. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Debbie's going to play for us. She'll play a couple of stanzas of a song of her choosing. As she does so, if you're here and you want to get saved, I'm not asking you to join the church unless you want to. If you want to get saved, you want to come back to God. If you want to join this church, you want to come forward for any reason. I want you to feel free to do it while she plays a couple of stands. I'll be right here to help you if you're calm. How about it? How about it while we wait? speaking would you come if you need to get saved if you're not saved you'll never go to heaven if you die like that you go to hell most certainly drop off into hell if you die without Jesus in your heart
no way to go to heaven without Christ in your heart. No way. 